So hi there, my name's Kate, and riding with me today is the hubby Nigel. We ride Cube Stereo 140 full suspension e-bikes and ride off-road as much as, much as possible. But we're seniors and we're novice mountain bike riders. Realistically, we can't and won't do the technical stuff beyond loose, roughish tracks. Today's ride is an 18 and a half circular route in Southern Cumbria, just south of Kendall, around a large outcrop of rock called Whitbarrascar. We set off from just outside the entrance to Sizer Castle, and firstly we travel three and a half miles, unfortunately, on minor roads. So we are, got Sizer Castle ahead of us, the entrance, and we'll just take a left up the hill, and then up to this T-junction, and we're going to turn right towards Levens. I'm going to go along here for roughly half a mile. We're going to just turn here to the right. Coming along here, we've got a left-hand turn. A nice little quiet road. Beautiful views. That is lovely. We missed this little turning a second ago and overshot it, so we're going to turn to the right up here now. So we just followed the road round to the left. You can see the village of Levens over on my left-hand side. So we've got a right turn ahead to the left. Would we'll take us back to Levens village. We're turning to the right. You can see straight ahead is the A590, but don't panic. We're not going there. This is the old A590 we're going to ride along. Just a now minor side road. We're turning on the right here, we'll take you up to Bowness, Windermere. We're going to go around to the left, past the Gilpin Bridge Hotel. And we're going to turn to the right onto a cycle track. And it signposts Sustran Route 70 and also 700. Oh, hi. The, the very busy A590, heading between Barrow and Kendall, that road. This keeps us nicely off the main road. We're onto another country lane here, and we're going to turn to the right. Just a couple of hundred yards along this little road, we're going to take a right hand turn. Now that scar, there is a track. One map shows it as a bridle way, one map as a footpath to the quarry at the base. So here, where we turn left, if you go on a little bit and then turn left, that track will actually take you up to the very base of the scar, which yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. We did it when we did this ride the first time, but I'm not going to do it this time. We're going to turn to the left of this bridle way here. A lovely gravel stony trail. And if I remember rightly, this will take us through to Bookhouse Wood. So we're kind of riding parallel with the scar at the moment. Three routes. Fabulous. Might not be so fabulous if they were wet, but they're nice and dry. Now we're going downhill. You can 
considering how wet it's been this last six, seven weeks, this trail is really quite dry. And you can see I've got the husband back riding with me. About 10 weeks after his knee replacement and he's up and doing all the routes that I'm doing. Absolute successful operation. And over to my left, I can see into Markham Bay. See the seaside. So this is almost a single track route at this point. Nice and firm, good surface, nice gravel. And we're going to hit a bit of a track. And we're heading for Beckhead. nothing more than a kind of farm track really compressed stone it's not a public highway which is perfect for us and i think it's this area that is called bookhouse wood onto a bit of a, a rough tarmac road and at the bottom here we're going to take a sharp right here we go right hand turn it says Beckhead only, no through road, but there is a bridle way just waiting for us. And ahead of us, you've got Beckhead Farm to the left. I'm just going to take a quick look in there because it's also the Witherslack Cycle Barn and Bunkhouse. So I'm just curious. Very nice, nice and secluded. Okay, I've had a bit of a noisy. We're now heading off towards the bridleway. Good surface. Gravel, a little bit of rock. Bearing left at the Ford, at the, sorry, at the junction there. And to our right, I can see we've got Witherslack Hall just appearing through the trees. So we're going to hit the road ahead. The route to, or the road to Witherslack Hall, and we're going to take a right hand turn. And we're out onto a minor road. Taking a little bit more of the, the scar face as we circumvented so about half a mile on this minor road until we get to the next turning sod it i'm pretty terrible it's quite a climb even though it doesn't look it i guess with a slack hole farm so just at this point we're going to take a left hand turn onto a bridleway Another good surface, and then about 50 yards up from the road, we take a right. Just a little bit rougher at this place, a few more loose stones. Bikes can't handle. Yeah, again, a little bit rougher. So 
sorry, I'm not saying very much because I'm actually concentrating. It was definitely a little bit rougher, but quite rideable. Or certainly we can manage it. I mean, if we can, I would have thought anyone pretty much can. Although I do appreciate everybody's got different riding abilities. The thing is, it's not particularly rough. And if you do find you can't ride it, you just get off and walk. So we're out onto the road and we're going to turn to the right. Very minor road. But it's one of those country lawns that's got grass growing in the middle. And if I remember rightly, there might even be a couple of gates, which just means it's not very busy. And at this point, we've come just over eight and a half miles and we're at our first gate. And the track becomes even more farm trackish. Thanks, Nigel. With some beautiful views to the left. There you can see what I mean. Lots of grass, no fences up the side of the road. And we've got cattle across our path. What oh, could be nicer? This is beautiful. Nice quiet road. We've just seen a deer run across the head of us. I saw a squirrel, a red squirrel the other day as well on, on this ride. So we're at a junction. Left is towards Borland Bridge. Straight on is towards Crossway. So you can see the scar ahead of us again. They were literally going right round it. And along here, there's a turning of right away on the right. It is steep and it is rocky. Let's see how we go. So that was a rocky uphill, but rideable. And we're now carrying on on a, a good gravel surface. Obviously doing some repairs to the stone wall. Not a soul around. So we've still got nearly a mile to go down on this track. A nice long one through the woods. We've got a bit of an uphill. So it's funny when you do these routes. It really doesn't matter how many times you do them, there's always bits you forget, and this is one of them. And how do you forget this? A long climb over, not rough, but rockyish. Yeah, it's the worst of the rock over. But we're still climbing. And there we are, out into bright sunshine. I've also found that the slower you go over some of this rough stuff, the worse it is. Sometimes you've just got to go with the flow. Onwards from the gate. 
nice shady route again through trees. I love that word, trees, trees. This is a little bit more soil surface with the gravel compressed into it. I'm quite pleased I've got full suspension if I'm honest. And the hard tails that we've got I would do this but uh, the full suspension is more comfortable and it certainly gives you a bit more of a, a confident ride. We're just about plow over anything or anything that we want to do because obviously we don't do silly bits we don't do jumps and drops technical or high level technical routes this is probably about our level well, maybe a bit rockier and a bit you know more up and down and this is a pretty easy trail to be honest but it's just nice. But I mean, would think it's one that's just about doable whatever the time of year. Right, coming out at the far end. So we go down the road here. But it's one of those country lawns that's got grass growing in the middle. And we've got a junction and we're going to turn to the right. And then turn left, just along here, Nigel. Ooh. Well, it says Lithe Moss Roads. Person using these roads do so at their own risk. So we go down here for a couple of hundred yards, grass in the middle, gravel down the sides. I don't know why there's no public access. Yeah. And that's because we get to a gate that's locked. This is a lovely gravel trail, much better than going on the road. But as I say, if you went on the road and then took her left, you'd come to where these cars are just here. And we go around to the left heading towards Brixter onto another country lane and we're on this for just over a mile so coming up to this junction T-junction we're going to turn to the right we're going to head off up this left hand trail going into Brixter So we're going to climb uphill and then as we're going uphill we've got a right hand turn onto the bridleway. Here we go. Heading downhill. A nice gravel and grass really back through more trees all right oh ouch that hurt not recommended when your hands for a hot or a rose bush we go gate and we're going up grass to the left 
through to the gate. Here you can see the signpost ahead of us there. And there's a, a gravel trail waiting for us. And we turn down to the right. And we're going to turn off this gravel track to the right onto more bridleway through the fields. Down towards the side of the castle. nice bit of downhill as well on grass fabulous oh i think that must be my favorite word fabulous I watch too much strictly from dancing gate and we're onto a, a nice gravel track heading to Sizer Castle. Through another gate onto a lovely fine gravel track. Heading off up for a bit. And we should see Sizer Castle appearing shortly ahead of us. We could have had a cycle round here. House and gardens to the left. Toilets, always useful. Can that be a better view of the castle? Slight deviation there just to see if we can get a picture of the castle. Right. Back to the car it is, along the exit road, and see if that pub's open. Yeah? yeah. Can I hear a cider calling me? Out through the gates, and we've got the Strickland Downs on the right, where I think we're going to go in. I think we're going in. We've done just over 18 and a half miles. A really super duper route. Although there are one or two places the surface gets a little bit rocky. But we actually rode everything. It obviously depends on your riding ability. We really enjoy the route. I think it's probably quite a good route to do if it's been very wet. 
because most of it is sort of gravel and there's not very much across grass and certainly I mean we've had so much rain the last seven weeks and yet doing it today and two days ago the route was completely dry which completely surprised me so have a look see and see what you think